I was saying in my opening remarks, tonight is kind of dedicated to elevating uh, the body in particular, I mean, in general, but young folks in particular. And in keeping with that, I want you to help me welcome to the Atlanta Live set our first uh, guest, Brother Anthony Kent from the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome, my friend. Thanks for having me. Good to have you here tonight. You come from one of my favorite towns, I want you to know that. I love Charlotte, I lived there almost 10 years back in ancient history, but it was still a beautiful place okay. back then. But welcome to Atlanta. Thank you. Now, tell me a little bit about you. You, you, were, former, uh, you were born and for the first few years lived in my home state, South Carolina. Yeah, uh, born in Charleston, South Carolina, okay. and then I uh, moved from Charleston at the age of 11 to Charlotte. At the age of 11? Yes, sir. So you've been there about eight or nine years. Yeah. Well, a lot longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I was just judging by the way you look, you okay, know. Thank you. Yeah. But now, in Charlotte, you found a toehold there. And not only has God blessed you in, in a way that, that will help build young people and, and not so young people too, but you've been blessed to pen a book that's kind of a panacea, kind of a guideline to help give direction and structure. Talk about your book, if you would. Well, the title of my book is called The Youth Advisor, A Young Adult's Guide to Success. Okay. And it's pretty much a financial tool, so it's all about financial literacy. Okay. Um, some of the chapters include uh, navigating through high school, yeah. preparing for college, getting financial aid, uh, college resources, sports and education, uh, getting return on the education, um, budgeting and credit, going corporate, uh, car buying, home buying, and lastly, investing in retirement. That's awesome. Now, I mean, uh, uh, you, I think you got just about every ingredient you, you could into that soup and that, and that financial bowl. Um, and and it's, it's unfortunate that there is a need for such a guide because it seems to me that that should be part of education, secondary education. But unfortunately, it isn't, and we have too many youth that's leaving school for whatever reason. Some graduating, some just graduating, <clears throat> but leaving school unprepared and unready to deal with to deal with finances. They'll make it, but so many of them lose it all. Now, what prompted you to to pin that book? What prompted you to write that? Well, it's kind of twofold. Well, you know, growing up, <clears throat> growing up, you know, I didn't have a sound. Um, financial upbringing, you know, when I, when I grew up, you know, me and my parents, we never talked about finances yeah, and yeah. stocks, you know, we just never had any financial conversation. Right. So when I got older and, you know, and got out in the world myself, I started to reflect back on my life and, okay. you know, uh, understood that there were a lot of gaps, you know, financial, financially. Yeah. Um, so um, the second piece is um, mm -hmm. just understanding the current environment of our youth. Um, there's just a lot of gaps there and I wanted to yeah. fill in those gaps financially by providing them with a financial resource tool. I think that's vitally important. That's vitally important. You know, I mean, we, we, we're not going to sit here and, and discuss the merits of whether or not it should be taught in secondary education, but the fact is that, that there's a need. There's a real need for what it is that you're providing out there. <clears throat> How do you reach your target audience? Well, it's, you know, of course, there's, there's several um, organizations, of course, you know, you have the church, right. getting involved with uh, youth programs within the churches, okay. um, high schools, colleges. Um, t typically, I reach out to um, human resources. Um, a lot of schools have different uh, programs where they get government funding yeah. um, to fill in uh, the gaps where financial literacy might be a problem. So those are some of my uh, target audiences. You find the target and, 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 and get Now, I think that's vitally, now, did you, and do you, have you found out through your work and through your research that there is an actual credible gap there in, in so many different areas? And it seems though you probably found them in a lot of areas because you've covered a lot of areas in your book, you know, as to where there are deficiency and things falling through the crack. You find that pretty prevalent. Well, you know, actually, it's not really hard to find. Yeah. If you just... Um watch a lot of news and if you if you even just walk through the mall let's say okay. if you walk through the mall okay. and you're just kind of observing youth you can understand what they spend their money on like you know one of the popular conversations now is you know Jordans yeah so of course you know you might have a pair of shoes that's worth five to ten dollars but you know people spend anywhere from two hundred dollars or more yeah. on those shoes so you know in essence that's not really a sound financial you know decision because shoes don't appreciate in value I agree. I agree. And, and 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 you have such a stigma that you're working against because young folks 
pick up what they learn from their parents and from older and 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 for a parent to buy into the fact that my child can't be relevant unless he or she has a two hundred dollar pair of sneakers then there needs to be some classes with the parents correct you know because the kids the kids and I, and then a lot of times too i find out that they they get into these foolish buys what i call foolish buys for a sense of acceptance and for a sense of somebody saying, hey, he must be all right because he got on some Jordash or, or not Jordash or whatever kind of uh, uh, clothing. And we need to, 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 to squash that. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you, you get invited into schools, into churches, into other arenas where you can speak with young folks and talk with them about that. Yeah, definitely, um, you know, speaking to the young, uh, to our youth as well as leading workshops. So my workshops are designed to and make sure that our youth understand the value of a dollar, like helping them, you know, understand what a budget looks like, under making sure they don't spend beyond their means, yeah. um, helping them with their credit, building credit, um, yeah. helping them understand what's the best educational route to take and make sure you get an effective return on your education and, and, and not overspend on your education. What's the age range, basically, you find yourself mentoring? Uh, so so the, the book is targeted towards um, high school and college students. Uh, I would say it's probably best to actually pick, up, pick it up at an eighth grade because, okay. you know, after eighth grade, you're going to transition into high school. Yeah. And high school, not your, your um, freshman year high school is that pivotal point because you don't want to get bad grades when you're in your freshman because it's right. typically hard to bring that, that uh, GPA average up. Right. Well, you know, and, and I agree, and it's hard to focus. And what you're calling on kids to reprogram prioritize their priorities you know and 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 uh, and and become concerned about substantive moves rather than what's popular or what's hip or what everybody else is doing you're looking past that and you're looking to something that's going to sustain and something that's going to grow you you know as we go older it's a sad commentary to start off poor and to work your whole life and to die poor that's that's a sad commentary, and and I believe that you, what you're telling me will work, irrespective of the financial uh, where you are financially. You know, it's not a matter of how much you get; it's a matter of what you do with what you get. And 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 I think that that's what old folks taught my generation. Unfortunately, my generation didn't pass that part of it on. It's not what you get, but how you use what you get. And I've seen some of some people; every dollar they got is in on their back. They don't even have a dollar in their wallet. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's funny that you say that. Um, on the back of my uh, book, um, one of my quotes is that um, money isn't everything, yeah. but how you spend it will determine how much you have of it left. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. How you spend it. You know, and as a pastor, I have to always say God gets his first. You know, once you, uh, and I believe that with all my heart, you know, and then I think you'll, 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 um, your steps and your procedures <clears throat> are awesome as far as helping us to maintain. But I always believe that Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. We, and I believe that with all my heart. So I believe that there has to be a spiritual base and then it has to be something substantive that you're teaching there. Have you had anybody to come back and say, hey, I appreciate what you did. I've noticed some changes in my life. I've got my credit together, things like that. Oh, definitely. You know, I have uh, parents reach out to me all the time and uh, they, they tell me how they use this book with their children to, you know, put that, to, to provide them with a sound financial yeah. understanding. Um, also, I have uh, colleges that buy my book and they actually have various programs where they are mandated to provide students with the financial financial literacy and they're talking yeah. about the good feedback they get um, from the students. Now, like you were saying earlier, it's a sad commentary that so many of our young folks who attend college come out almost college poor. Uh, definitely. So, um, you know, college debt right now is, is definitely a problem. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the average cost of a public school is $9,000, you know, a year, which is um, probably definitely uh, higher than when you, you know, you and school bit. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely higher. Um, and um, so, you know, definitely when you go to college, you want to make sure you're making uh, a good decision. You want to yeah. pick a major that's going to offer you gainful employment so you can pay back those loans. Um, 
And, you know, the, the issue with loan, the issue with loans is that, you know, some people are getting these loans and then, you know, they might actually work for the rest of their lives and never pay off yeah. those loans. Yeah. And, you know, the, the Lord, you know, doesn't want us to be in debt. You know, he wants us to be financially sad. Lenders instead yeah. of borrowers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, uh, you know, in Proverbs 22 and 7, uh, the Bible reads, the rich rules over the poor and the lender is a slave to the borrower. So, you know, the Lord definitely did not intend for us to be in debt. Yeah, the borrower is a slave to the lender. And I agree with that. You know, um, 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 how and perspective. I've, I've met a lot of people who've dealt in the financial arena, but I don't think I've met one whose book was as total and as comprehensive as your approach here on, on catching them at, a, at an impressionable age. And, and teaching substantive values that will bring that will yield great results. I think it's not it's not by happenstance, it's not by chance, it's by it's through preparing yourself, you know, for what lies ahead. Now is there another book on in the works? So um, actually, I have a book on, on hold right I now. I thought you did. I so, can look um, at your tab. But this book is primarily uh, focused around um, day trading. Day trading. Yeah, so it's another financial tool. Yeah, well, see, you you just going right straight over the top of my head. Oh, you know, that's pretty yeah, much you know. everything I've heard about day trading. I know it's way too deep for me, you know, um, but 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 I think those are areas that need to be dealt with. They need to be approached, need to be dealt with. Now, are you available to come to, uh, say, to Atlanta to talk with a group, meet with a church group or something like that? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I, I can be reached at uh, 704-659-3922. Um, you know, also my website, you can reach me at www.theyouthadvisor.com. Theyouthadvisor.com. Give me that phone, 704-659-3922. I did that purposely because some folks write like me. Okay. You know, it's a little bit slow, so I give them a chance to get it because I want them to get this information. Sometimes we perish for a lack of information, for a lack of knowledge, or for a lack of understanding. And I applaud you for what, what, what made you decide to do this, though? Um, like I said before, it's, it's really had a lot to do with my upbringing and, and yeah. not having that financial understanding from from my parents. So it's not that I blame them for it. It's just that, you know, they weren't taught those things That's so they right. can teach them right. to me. And, That's you know, right. I see a lot of a lot of youth that are in that similar situation, and I want to bridge that gap. How old is too old to get serious about your finances? Well, I don't want to throw a no, particular I'm age out there. Yeah. But, but typically, um, you know, when you're young, when you first start working, you need to understand how much money you need to retire. Yeah. So typically when you get into your... 40s, somewhere yeah. around there, if you haven't accumulated a, a certain amount of money, yeah. it, it, you, you're probably in a bad position because for someone my age, you know, Social Security might not That's right. be there. That's right. So, you know, it's, it's all relative to your to your situation and, and yeah. your lifestyle because also, too, you know, and, you know, depending on what lifestyle you live, you, you might be able to survive off 500000 or a million or if you, you live a, you know, look, a, a, an expensive lifestyle, yeah. you might need a couple of million to, yeah, to you know, yeah, ultimately, yeah, ultimately yeah. retire. Well, I, I, I can, I can, I can relate to what you're saying because of my generation too. There are a lot of things that I wasn't made abreast of, and I was 40 years old before somebody sat down with me and gave me the intricacies, other than what I was getting on my job, those benefits, the intricacies of financial planning, and that's why I ask because. Sometimes the older they get, the money is a little bit freer, mm -hmm. you know, than it is for young folks. They can start with a small amount over a long period of time. But like with me, my house was paid for, so my house note went into investing. So sometimes that's why I'm saying, you know, even at a later age, we can still learn how to become effective and enhance our retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I applaud you for that. Now, the book, Youth Advisor... Youth advisor, you know, uh, preparing our youth for the 21st and 22nd century. Mm -hmm. You know, now um, uh, you were here earlier today, right? Yeah, I actually I had an interview at uh, with Derek Bozeman. Okay, and and here tonight. Correct. And then back to Charlotte tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Now I, I ask you that for a specific reason, because many times people will see. You flourish in, in your career and doing great things and all that, but they don't see the work behind the scene 
the sacrifice, the time. And I think that that's something that, that needs to be lifted up in the last minute we have or so, is that doing this does require sacrifice. It does require focusing and, and, and making up your mind and then following through with what you've decided, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the big things I talk about in my book is um, chronic procrastination. Okay. So that's one of the things I removed away I moved, removed from my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of folks are, are sit, still sitting on that seat of what should I do instead of just getting up and doing something. Just do something. But I think your, your book, The Youth Advisor, and tell us again how we can get our hands on that book. Uh, www.theyouthadvisor.com. Uh -huh. Theyouthadvisor.com. Also, um, Amazon.com and BarnesandNobles.com. Okay. Well, I applaud you, my friend, and I wish you well, and I wish you'd come back when the next book is out, okay? Okay. All right. God bless right. you. Have a safe trip back to Charlotte. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.